Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 11 beta one is finally here for developers. It will be available later in the month for public beta testers. And then later in the year, usually around September or the iPhone eight launch for the final public version. So this came in at just over two gigabytes. I installed it. It took quite a while to install and Apple has quite a few changes. Some are subtle, some aren't, but the iPad has the biggest changes. Let's take a look at the version number. You can see this version is 15 a 5278 F and with it comes some major changes and not so big changes. There are quite a few feature updates, but the biggest ones came to iPad and I'll show you that in a little while. Let's first take a look at messages. So this is messages and we're all familiar with it. And Apple only made a couple tweaks here. One of the things they did was add some new effects. So you've got these screen effects and there's two new ones. One is echo. We'll hit send. You'll see echo. And then I'll send another one that spotlight and it says, hello. It's pretty neat. One of the other things they've done is add a quick way to get to your app. So you've got all your apps down here. If you use stickers a lot, Mario, for example, you've got a quick way to get to your stickers. You can also pay someone with Apple pay directly now. Now that's not yet turned on. It seems, or I haven't enabled it, but you'll be able to actually pay someone directly from your phone here to someone else's phone. So that'll be a nice little option as well. They've also changed the keyboard a little bit in iPhone, you can actually hold your keyboard here and now you have a one handed keyboard. So if you've got a big screen like this, now you can just type more easily with your right or left hand. You can just shift it left or right and then go back to center. One of the next things they've done is change some of the zooms, some of the animations and some of the fonts throughout. Now here it looks pretty normal, but here it's got a different menu. It looks a little bit different. We have emergency SOS, Siri and search looks new, and there's some changes to that we'll talk about in a moment. And now we have accounts and password. Accounts and password are just all of your accounts and passwords, so I'm not going to go into that, but it's just your email accounts, things like that. One of the other things they've done though is change actually iPhone storage. So under general in iPhone storage, you now have this new overall generalization of your phone storage and how you can actually fix it or recommendations. So it says I could turn on iCloud photo library, empty my recently deleted album. It'll change some messages in iCloud and it just shows you the system and different things using apps. And you'll see there's some lag here and that's because this is beta one beta. The first one to three betas are usually really buggy. So I don't normally recommend installing them on your everyday use phone. So let me go back here. So you'll see there's those changes built in and everything else looks fairly similar, but you'll see the change of it saying settings at the top. That's kind of found throughout that was taken from the music app that was designed last time and changed throughout. And you saw that animation looked a little bit different. Now within notes, they've made some changes. So notes here, iPad, it's a little bit better because you can use the pencil with it, but you can have a built in document scanner now. So that's built into the OS. If I go to scan documents, this is just for my book arc that I have. Let me back up here. Let me see if I can just scan this one side of the document. Well, and I, I hit the button too fast, but you can adjust it to where you want the document to be. And you can retake it, of course, but you just want to readjust it like that. Say that's what the document is right there. Use the scan and you can scan another one or it's kind of twisted, but you can actually retake it, get it to be more precise. It picks up what it thinks is a document and this will get better over time. You'll see it kind of goes a little crazy there, but that's built in. And then you can mark up those notes from within notes. So in notes, you can put an inline note, we'll go to cancel. You can do inline notes right here. We'll cancel this. We'll discard it for now, but now you can do inline notes right within your notes. Just mark it up here. If you have a pencil on an iPad, it's even better. And I'll show you more on the iPad later. The next thing is wallpaper. This is the only new wallpaper within here. They've only done the one wallpaper. Maybe they'll have more later, but right now it's the only wallpaper I could find that's new. There's nothing else in there. And we don't even have the new iPad wallpapers that they had on the 12.9 inch iPad with the last beta. So that's it for that. Now photos gets a little bit of an update. 
So here's a live photo that was actually from the keynote. So if I push on it, you'll see it's moving. And I can edit that by swiping up here. I can change it to a loop. So if I want the video to just loop itself, you'll see it's looping. It doesn't look really good, but it's looping. You can have it bounce back or you can have it do a long exposure. So it looks a little bit different. It takes a moment to apply the effect and now it has a long exposure where it combines multiple frames into one. So that's nice and built right in. You can also edit the live photos as far as the actual point you want to use. So you'll see this is actually the benchmarks. They're about the same as the last one so I wasn't going to go into those too much. And a new lock screen looks a little different. So we'll go back to the live photos. We'll tap on this and then we'll go to edit and there's all sorts of new editing abilities in here. So you've got it on loop. I'll take that off and let's see, we can auto fix it. You just have a bunch of different things as far as filters in here. A lot of new options directly built into the OS now as far as editing that. You can even pick your favorite frame from within one of the live photos. So if you use live photos a lot, you'll be really happy as far as that goes. Now, one of the next big things they've done is change the app store and along with it, they've changed the icon. So if I go into the app store, you'll see it takes a moment to load and it's very different. You can see you scroll up, you've got a new Monument Valley 2 that came out today and we can go into this and take a look at what's different about it. There's some animations within it. This is basically from the developer and what they're talking about. One of my favorite games, if I scroll down here, you'll see there's movement from within. You can just keep going. And then you have a games tab for many different games. You can even sort by genre now, right here, top categories. You've got your apps. You've got updates. Updates looks different as well. There we go. You'll see it says pending updates. Then you just update all. It looks a little bit different. And then you can search as well. So that's that's a change there. They've also changed the iTunes icon. So if I scroll down here and, and type iTunes, it's now a star. It looks a little bit different. And they've changed this little tweaks here and there. Not a whole lot different. It looks very similar. But they changed the icon at least. Now aside from that update, they've changed Siri. Siri has a new voice. Hi, how are you today? They've refined the voice and changed the icon a little bit down here. And it just looks a little different. It also does more. It, it has built in translations. So let's ask it a question. How do you say hi, how are you in Chinese? Hi, and there you have that. You can do this in a couple different languages. You can replay it. Hi, you can even use French or German. There's only a few supported languages right now, but they're working on more all the time. So they will be adding those. And by the time this releases, there could be a lot more uh, different language translations built in. One of the new things has to do with predictability throughout the OS. And one of the things shown off by Craig Federighi is that he actually went and looked up a trip to Iceland and then it knew that he was looking at that trip and suggested different things throughout his news app. So in news, he was looking at that and it, it looked up his suggestions and there's top stories and all sorts of different top stories from different news places. And it looked up different suggestions on, and I don't read really any political news. Let's see what it has for spotlight. So right there, uh, there's supposedly suggestions based on what you look at. I haven't looked at anything yet on this phone and you'll notice the names are gone here down on the bottom as well. That's not a mistake. It carries across on the iPad as well. Now, another feature they brought up was driving. When you're driving, it has a built-in do not disturb. And this is do not disturb in the control center, which is completely redesigned and do not disturb will actually pop up and keep your screen blank when you're actually driving and only allow you to respond. Now you can bypass that and say you're the passenger, but it's a good way for you to actually lock down your phone. It will send an auto reply text and it just keeps you safer while driving. Now with the control center, we can tap and use 3d touch and it brings up more options. If we go back again, more options here, we can turn up the flashlight or turn it down calculator. We can go to the brightness or, the brightness of the phone, turn on night shift, 
volume, etc. So everything's here. They say this is going to be customizable, but I wasn't able to customize it yet. So maybe that's not turned on as well. I'm not sure I like the look of it. It's very straightforward, but it's very simple as well. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. And one of the other redesigned looks is notifications. So if you pull down on notifications, it looks just like the lock screen. If I go to earlier today, there's all sorts of other notifications as well. They wanted it to look consistent. You can go to the left or to the right for camera. And that's what notifications looks like. I'm not sure I like that. I was hoping they'd kind of copy Android a little bit more on that side, but it looks to be okay. And I'll be using it for some time. One of the other things they've done is change music a little bit. They've added a feature where you can follow friends and find friends. So within here, we can actually see the playlists and the different things our friends are actually playing when they're available to follow. So someone else actually has to have iOS 11, then you can follow them or find them. And it didn't ask me to set it up here, but you can find friends, follow them, see what they're listening to and share with them as well. Also, when you're home, you, you can actually share playlists with your friends and add your music to theirs, as long as you have Apple Music, I believe. Now, within Maps, they've made a change as well. One of the, the changes is indoor actual maps. So if you're in a mall, for example, and it's supported and it's updated, which there will be many more by the end of the year, you'll be able to see the indoor directions for a mall that's nearby, or maybe an airport was one of their suggestions. And right now there's only some supported, but there will be more in the future. They'll also give the ability to see turn by turn directions that have which lane you need to be into. So similar to Google, it will give you lane guidance when you're in the actual direction. So that's new also. There's a hugely good new app, which is called files. And this is the file system and you can see all your files. Finally, we'll wait for it to actually load here, but you'll see there's a few different ones here that I have on my computer and you can actually see your recents as well. So there's different things within the Mac. So I can see the documents on my Mac pro and all sorts of other things that I use, all the images I use for my different videos. They're all right here and easy to get to. And it's just a file explorer that's easy to go back and forth between. So that's a new app that's just built in. And I was really happy to see that. One thing Apple didn't mention is a new way to set up your device. So if you get a new iPhone, maybe you've got an old one, like this old cracked one I've shown you before, you bring the old one up to the new one and it actually helps you set it up more quickly. It will transfer things like your key pass, your keychain passwords, all sorts of things, of course, with your permission. And then everything's encrypted by default. APFS is on here which it has been for a little bit, but everything's highly encrypted and shared just with you. Now, one of the other major changes is with the iPad. So let me move over to that and show you that now. This is my 12.9 inch iPad Pro. It's running iOS 11, just like my iPhone. And it's a major redesign in one sense that it has a dock, it has different multitasking and some other features as well. So let me show you how this works. We'll open the app store. So here's the app store. Again, it's redesigned just like the iPhone and it's not resizing properly. And this is typical of a beta. You have a few issues here and there and they'll fix this over time. But with a beta, you expect things to actually not work perfectly. So we've got that. We scroll up again. Now we've got iTunes or music. Maybe we'll bring music up. We'll bring it up here. We can move it wherever we want. I'll move it over here. And now we have music fully functional in the right. So we can multitask like that. Now, if I bring it back down, I can bring it into split view just like before. And now you've got split view. If I go home and swipe up again from the bottom, we've got the command center and control center along with our split view we had before it's built in and it remembers the state, which you had before you can go back and forth, pick whichever one you want, go here, double tap, go back. And now we're back. So it's all built in and I think it's a great, great update. Now, one of the other things they did was add drag and drop. So if we have a document we want, so we'll open notes and maybe we want something from a file, put it here and maybe we want this song, I guess, or maybe we'll go back. We'll see recents. There we go. Here's one of the photos I used a long time ago. We'll add it right to notes. We dragged and dropped between the two. Again, we can bring it back to split view. We can bring the other one, drop it over here. Give it a moment. Oh, maybe it's, it recognizes the same file, but you get the idea. You can move back and forth 
without any issue whatsoever. So that is a much needed, much better way to actually use an iPad and something I was very excited to see them actually update with. Now on the keyboard, you actually have another option as well. So if we go into a note, we go here, quick type allows you just to swipe down and then have a different symbol. So if we try this, oh, it works on here with these different symbols. So maybe we go into this table here and we want to use six, but instead we want the arrow, we just swipe down and star brackets or parentheses rather brackets, all sorts of different things. That's all built in to the keyboard and makes using it much easier and simpler. One of the big things you can't see that they added is AR kit or augmented reality kit. This is for developers and they showed off a game where they had a bunch of things on a table, sort of like a tower defense game, but it was on a table and you look through the iPad using the camera to see what's on the table. And it looked really impressive and it makes things like Pokemon Go more easy for developers to implement. So they can actually just use that kit, it implements what they need to, and they don't have to figure out how to make it look like something standing on a table. And one of the examples they gave was Ikea, maybe putting furniture in your room and just having it there through the iPad so you can see what it would look like. So those are all coming soon. We'll be able to see more things like that. And there are a bunch of little hidden things here and there throughout the OS. You'll see this looks a little bit different if you have an iPad. Just the OS in general looks a little different. Threaded conversations are a little different throughout email and there's tweaks here and there and I expect to see more changes over time. So that's it for iOS 11. Those are the major changes. I'm sure there's other little things throughout the OS, but if you found anything significant, let us know in the comments below. And if you'd like this wallpaper, it's the iOS 11 wallpaper. I'll try and link it for you. But other than that, let me know what you think of iOS 11 and all the other things they, they announced. They announced the new watch OS, uh, Mac OS, High Sierra, also a new iPad, new iMacs. I was very excited about the new iMacs, the new iMac Pro that will come out in December. There are a ton of new things that I was really excited for. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. As a little bonus within settings, I found under general, accessibility and then under accessibility you actually have display accommodations they have a new invert colors smart invert it's sort of a dark mode but not really so you go back home and maybe go into messages it's still dark so it is kind of a dark mode but not exactly it will look a little goofy in certain situations